Let's talk about carbon fiber, or more specifically, a novel way to manufacture tubular shaped carbon fiber parts that I developed, trapped rubber molding. Safe build stuff. Okay, well, I didn't exactly develop this technique. I just kind of had to figure it out on my own as there's not a whole lot of information out there about it. Normally with a tubular shaped composite part like this, you would make a two part mold and use a flexible bladder on the inside to apply pressure to the inside of the part. That of course works great, but can come with some complications, particularly for volume manufacturing. With trapped rubber, you use a solid silicone rubber mandrel, which applies pressure to the inside of the part as you heat the mold because silicone rubber has a very high coefficient of thermal expansion. We have to heat the mold anyways to cure the prepreg resin, so it's a passive way of applying compaction to the inside of your part. This video is one from the archives where I make a 30 degree tube joiner part. This part would serve as a proof of concept which would later be scaled up to manufacture several different parts with great success. Like most projects, this starts with a CAD drawing of the part, then a mold is designed around the part. The channel around the mold cavity is for excess resin to collect. There are four holes to bolt the mold together. And you can see that I kind of run out of space at the top here. That's because I was just working with extra material I had in stock, so I didn't have to order more material to make this mold. With the mold design completed, tool paths for CNC machining were generated, and I could go make my mold. Okay, so I got the first half of the mold done, and what I've done is I've, I haven't faced the top off because what I need to do is I need to sand, hand sand, finish the uh, mold cavity in here. Not a very good uh, finish, so I'm going to sand it really good with some 320 grit sandpaper to get rid of all these little tool mark lines. So what happens when you sand in here, uh, no matter how careful you think you are, you end up rounding this edge off a little bit. So that would leave... Um, kind of a, a, a scalloped edge when the, the part's actually molded. So what I've done is I've left about uh, 100 thousandths of material. So I'm gonna hand sand finish this. The edge will be kind of rounded, that's okay. Then I'm gonna put the part back in the machine and then I'll face it off so I'll have a nice, um, a nice flat edge so that my molded part won't have a big ugly scallop. All right, first half of the mold is sanded and looking pretty good. At this point, it's ready to go back in the machine and I'll, and I'll face the top off and cut that resin channel. Well, here's the second half of the mold. Looks exactly like the first half. <laughs> but right now, what I need to do is uh, sand the mold face in here. And while that's going on, I've got my other part. Can't see much, but it's in there and it's running. You can read the numbers on the screen. Alright, I got my second mold side sanded. Now let's put it in the machine so we can face it off.
With the mold machining completed, I could now prep the mold to cast the rubber mandrel. I need to offset the surface thickness of the mold to allow room for the carbon laminate. To do that, we use a special sheet wax that comes in specific thicknesses. The wax is tricky and takes some practice and patience to get it right. It also doesn't stick to the cold aluminum, so I had to use some spray adhesive. After the molds were waxed, I applied a liberal coating of mold release and closed up the mold. I then used masking tape to close up the holes at one end of the mold and build up a wall for extra material to pool up on during casting. Then it's time to mix the rubber. Silicone rubber must be vacuum degassed to remove air that gets trapped during the mixing process. This is always a cool process to watch and I feel it would make John Carpenter proud. Okay, I think this is looking good. There's just a few air bubbles left, just a few small ones on the surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off and we'll do some casting. Some of the wax is uh, just stuck to the outside of the part. Shouldn't be a problem. There we go. Look at that. And with a little trimming and cleanup, the tooling is complete. Now it's finally time to make the part. Start by wrapping the mandrel with release film. This works, but as you can see, it's fiddly and basically impossible to wrap the mandrel tightly. Later, this would be replaced with a liquid release agent that does the job perfectly. Next, I cut the prepreg. I will be using all unidirectional material with one outer ply of woven for cosmetic appearance. And on to the layup process. It's kind of funny to go back and watch myself after a couple years of experience with this stuff. I look like a monkey humping a football. 
yes, I should totally be wearing gloves. The first ply is always the trickiest as it doesn't really want to stick to the mandrel, but once you get it on, all the other plies will stick to the previous plies just fine. I don't remember what the actual laminate schedule on this part was, but it looks like I started with two ply of 90s and then added several zeros. You don't want to remove uni from the backing paper like I am here. It's far too fragile and will pull apart. But despite being a total noob, I was able to get a laminate together and looking pretty decent. Definitely nowhere near optimal strength and stiffness, but that's not really the point of this project. The point is to prove the manufacturing technique so it's just the overall laminate thickness that was important. The outer cosmetic ply of woven material is applied directly to the tool face and then it is trimmed flush. hit it with the heat gun to um, make it a little more pliable, a little more tacky, a little more compliable. And so yeah, it goes right in there nice and good when it's, yeah, when it's been heated. The complete layup is installed in the mold cavity. Heat is applied to the mold via two stick-on sheet heaters controlled via a temperature controller which is programmed for the appropriate ramp soak heat cycle of the prepreg resin. After about an hour and a half, the cooking is complete and the mold can be cooled. And there it is, the first part. It worked, but overall poor compaction due to the mold not being closed at the ends that allowed the rubber mandrel to expand out the sides, which meant less pressure applied to the laminate. I went back and added end caps to fix that in subsequent parts. The rubber mandrel was pretty tricky to remove, partially because of the release film. It's much easier to remove with the proper liquid release agent that I would use later on. It's coming out.
the final part. It's got a few issues, but the project served its main purpose, which was to prove this type of molding technique. It's always important to start new things with the simplest case possible, and then apply those lessons later on in the future on more complex projects. I would use this basic technique for several other parts that were put into production and would go on to make really great parts with good success. Thanks for checking this out. I really enjoy working with composite materials. The processes involved are very cool and the final parts, when you do it right, look and perform amazing. I really hope to be able to share more content with you like this in the future. So, you know, like, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And I'll check you out on the next one.